wow. I said to Rubina, she said, oh, can I take your bio from your LinkedIn profile? I said, yeah, sure. I wish I'd not. I mean, that, that sounded good, didn't it? That was impressive. I wondered who you were talking about. Um, it's Friday, everyone. How are we feeling? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, I'm going to make a couple of apologies. First of all, the accent is very northern. I'm from Manchester, straight off the cobbles of Coronation Street. Um, if you need a translator, I'm sure we can arrange one. And I'm too old for it to go. I've learned some things here in Adelaide, like no worries. And the girls that work for me will say, oh, you'll froth over this, Anna. And I'm trying to <laughs> get down with what's just, you know, Gen Z, that I'm not. I'm a geriatric millennial. And what's Adelaide? So I'm still working it all out. Um, my second apology is for my hands. I'm a hand talker, and, and I can't stop it. I've been through the training courses. I know I shouldn't. I know it's distracting. I've got two things in my hands. That's why I didn't want a lapel mic, and I still can't help it. So we're just going to have to get over that. Um, and I'll make a third apology. It was really short notice, so I apologize in advance. This, I'm going to take you through a journey um, around event marketing and how we kind of springboard of our digital success. But I wish I'd had a bit more time to take you through one of the fabulous campaigns that got us to the finalists of the awards that Rabina managed to um, do some great promotion about. Oh, done. I'm in. <laughs> um, so I am not too familiar with everybody in the room because um, obviously I've only come here for this slot, unfortunately. Can I just do a quick check just for me? Like, wh who do we have here? Have we got marketing managers? No? Yes? Have we got um, sort of social media managers? Yep. Business owners? Web, web people? Oh, God, I'm not a website expert, so you're okay over there. Um, and who else? Who, who else have we got in the room? Yeah, great, government. Well, it's good I know that, because now I'll have to be very JLL and, you know, a bit more, a bit more corporate. Um, no, I can't, I can't do it. So, I'm going to talk to you about Kidchella. This is, um, I'll take you through the journey as quickly as possible, and it gives us the chance to then ask any questions you may have. It's not too digital-led, I've got to be honest, because um, anything we do really isn't. It's part of our mix. So I'll talk to you a bit about the mix of media. Um, JLL, which was known as Jones Lang LaSalle, is the company that I work for. So if you don't know about us, we've now been 60 years here in Adelaide. We celebrate our 60th on the 29th of September in this very room, so very exciting times. And um, we're a global organization. We're basically um, a real estate firm, and we're shaping um, real estate for a better future. So, you know, ESG, all these fabulous things, we're right, uh, as right at the top of our agenda. Um, for myself, I started with the company just under four years ago. I've been in Adelaide five years, by the way, and I love it. I love, love, love it. And um, four years ago when I started, it was because uh, a company called Macris Group owned six shopping centers here in Adelaide. One of them was more a hospitality center, and it was Marina Pier Glenelg. And they needed someone. They'd gone through quite a few marketing people, I think. Bit of a tough gig, I'm not going to lie. An interesting client with a, a diverse mix of property. And... Um, I didn't know them. I'd not read the news articles or saw them on Google and heard all the awful things. <laughs> so I was a bit naive and just went for the job. And um, as it turns out, it was you know one of the best decisions I made. Uh, they sold properties over the last few years. So they sold off some of their properties. And that helped me expand what I now head up my own retail marketing department. So we have the fantastic Iris here with me today and a lovely lady called Alison. And uh, the three of us basically look after eight different retail um, centers in Adelaide. So different shopping centers and also five restaurants. Um, and I help JLL on the corporate side. So that's a bit about what I do. Um, JLL, we're across 80 countries, more than 100,000 employees. Here in Adelaide, we have about 140, and we've seen real growth. But, you know, time, times are definitely going to get tougher in the property sector, no doubt about it. Um, so we're getting ready for that. So Marina Pier, oh, still got Marina Pier. Matt Chris didn't sell it, so it's still part of our portfolio. 
Um, who's been to Marina Pier? Oh, did you go on a Tinder date or with your grandma? Or was it 15 years ago? Because <laughs> uh, that's pretty much what it's known for, right? You know, it was good back in the day, about 15 years ago when Glenelg was absolutely pumping and thriving. And um, over time, you know, it didn't get updated and our client maybe hasn't, you know, kind of got it to where it needs to be for 2022 and beyond. So the chat, but it's a beautiful spot. It's so gorgeous. It's where Anzac Highway meets the sea and um, there's a few other marketing uh, taglines I'm sure I could throw at you, but it really is a beautiful spot and there's plenty to do there, but it was a real challenge as to how we actually market it, you know? People knew of it, but not many people go to it. So the challenge was real. Um, it was so sad <laughs> and lonely. And when I took over four years ago, we literally had a tenant occupancy rate of 52%. So half of Marina Pier was not occupied by restaurants. And I do remember you'd sort of walk down and is it open? Is it not? What's that without Bat Jacks? It's got a sign, but it doesn't look like it's been inhabited for about five years. What's going on? And then you'd walk on and you'd pass the island and it would be Oyster Bar, which was always great. And then you'd carry on again and then you'd eventually get down to Sammy's, which is known for expensive posh fish and chips, right? Um, so the, <laughs> it was a really difficult precinct to market. Um, and Families, as I, as I started to you know, ask the questions, they didn't ever want to attract or had thought to attract families to, to the restaurant precinct. Now, again, sorry, all you fabulous digital experts, I'll just go a bit broader marketing, but I know, I know what's right, because I'm Anna Louise Kopic, and I'm always right, and, but I also know that to be professional, especially representing a fantastic global brand like JLL, we have to use all our tools in the toolkit, right? So research is something that where we can afford it, I really won't skip that step, because even if it doesn't show us anything that we don't already know, it really helps me as a bargaining tool with the owners um, to get my idea across the line. So we did, Macris were great. They said, yeah, we'll do some research. We partnered with Retail Doctor based out of Sydney. So um, Macris had some properties across Australia. So we did like a company-wide thing. It was great. And it came back, you know, surprise, surprise, that one of our key um, consumer segments here in Adelaide are looking for child-friendly options. So something that is relaxed and they want good quality food and an experience. They don't, you know, they don't want shit. But, um, they don't, and they're happy to pay for it, but it's got to be good value. And what I found with all the restaurants, the half of them that were, were open, was that they were charging ridiculous amounts of money for fish and chips or, you know, a, a lobster, fantastic high tea for about $400 for two. And they kept using the words like fine dining or across their social media websites, it would all be about fine dining and this culinary experience. And it just wasn't what our target demographic needed or wanted. So um, the reasons people like yourselves um, didn't go to Marina Pier was there was a lack of events. So it was difficult for them to get excited and you know have a hook for them. A lack of atmosphere. And it's not just in Glenelg, it's also number one for Adelaide as a whole, one of the biggest barriers is parking. But you know what, you control some things and some things you just don't, and I don't control parking, so I took that one off the list. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, we did a workshop, and just to reinforce what I said, shopping wasn't a priority for them, so these weird little shops that the client was popping up in between all these restaurants needed to stop. You know, we had a surf shop there for a while, that did okay, then it didn't. We had a little clothes boutique there, that did okay, then it didn't. And we just needed to concentrate on marketing ourselves as a really great, family-friendly, good value destination to go and hang out. Um, so we focused our efforts, nobody believed me, but I said, we're going for families, and that's what we did. But then, how do you find the opportunity? And I didn't want to fail. I was brand new into the job. This was like my big new thing. And I'm from Manchester, not Adelaide. And I wasn't sure I really understood Marina Pier anyway. So, <laughs> and then my husband, he's got coffee vans. 
Um, he's, I think he's trying to get rid of them now. But anyway, he's, he's had them for 14 years. And he said, oh, you know, look, he's from Manchester as well. And he said, oh, you know, love, I'm going to go. I'm not going to be here on Sunday. I'm doing um, City to Bay. And I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know how to spell it. I couldn't work out what he was trying to tell me. What's City to Bay? And he was doing, at Wigley Reserve, he was a pop-up coffee van for the end of the, the race. So then I thought, oh, God, all those people are going to be on that reserve, and they're just going to literally look across at our empty, sad, derelict restaurants. But we, <laughs> we really need them. Like, we really need those people over there. So um, I decided that's what we'd do. We'd do it on City Today Day. And the challenge was set. We literally needed to get people to walk from Wigley Reserve on to Marina Pier. And I, I was sure that we could do something fabulous if I could make that happen. So I came up with Kid Cella. And at the time, I think, um, oh God, who was it? Was it Kim Kardashian? So anyway, somebody put a picture up and their one-year-old daughter on Instagram had this Coachella-inspired party for her one-year-old. One you know, 41 years of age. I'm good on social media, but I'm not as good as some of you, right? But I like to use it for inspo, scroll through. And I saw this and I thought, that's it, we'll do Kid Cella. So um, I got everybody along with me. They were waiting for me to fail, I'm sure. <laughs> but we, we developed a unique brand. So we tried to make sure we had really limited budget, guys. You'll see it on the, one of the slides. But we spent around 11 and a half K on this whole thing. And it's not, it's not enough. And it wasn't a lot. But it was all they'd give me to spend. So we did the best we could, ordered a load of TPs off eBay, um, made sure that the graphic designer made everything look as consistent as we possibly could, and tried to just you know, create a brand that was recognizable, but that was bright, fun, the festival vibe, and focused around the, you know, the parents and the kids. Um, what did we do? Well, we had a jam-packed um, agenda. So all these activities were free, so I managed to do some negotiations with the partners and get them to do some great discounts and deals. But on Marina Pier, because it's not hard enough, um, half of it is owned by my client and half of it, the, the main walkway, is owned by Strata. So you, it's not like you can just go drinking down the walkway or have loads of a fashion show going on because we don't, we don't own you know, that land. Fair enough. It's also very um, densely populated above with residents people that own these fabulous quarter of a million dollar, if not much, much more actually, over a million dollar now, um, apartments. But they kind of think they're shareholders in all the restaurants and, and they, they're a bit confused about what they own privately and, you know, that they're not the, the easiest to deal with. Um, and they have great restrictions on noise levels. So we're a hospitality destination, but you can't play live music or you can't have it this loud. And it's, there's loads of barriers for the, for the guys down there. So that's fine. We'll do a silent disco because then no one can tell me off. I'm not going against any laws or noise issues. And we did. We did, we did a silent disco and it was great. Um, we did flower crown making, a glitter bar, which went off. That was one of the most uh, things. And we did things like got the restaurants involved with milkshake masterclasses. And we did mini fashion scouters to go up and down the pier and spot people to give prizes to. So it was full of loads of fun things. Oh, I mean, look at that gorgeous little girl's Camilla dress. Um, everybody made a real effort. We got a local salon involved. Everybody loved Dolly the Dolphin. Poor Dolly. I found Dolly in an old empty tenancy about four years ago, and it, and it was awful. It was just, it was distressed, it was dirty, it was horrible. So we spent $500 professionally dry cleaning Dolly, and look at her now. She's a highlight of Marina Pier. Um, and this was like Ibiza. It was brilliant. And all the, all the mums and dads got involved in the silent disco. It was fantastic. Um, and it was before COVID. I must say, this was 2019, okay? So I will take you up to 2022, I promise. I know you keep me on track, Rabina. Um, but this is basically... Will sound come on, Rabina? No? Are we soundless? I was gonna say
we did it. It was really great, and um, it was a defining moment. And one of the things um, that really helped make it a success was that some of the restaurants, not all, did get on board before the festival, and they decided that they could market through, obviously, digital media, that they could buy, um, you know, these great kids' snap packs, and they were pre-ordered, so before the event, they sold out. It was so busy. The pier's never been that busy since because of COVID, and it had never been that busy before. So we actually had 3,000 people on Marina Pier that day, um, and nobody could believe it, you know, this ghost town. And because it was a ghost town, I used that to our advantage, and I used the empty tenancies to fill them with all the activities that we did so it didn't look at all empty everything was completely you know full um the result in terms of the only way i could get them from wiggly reserve over to kidchella i knew is if we really had a strong pr strategy so it wasn't enough just to advertise on social media which was great because it was free and we had no money but pr if we could get it right was also a free way for us to um you know help increase um, the, the brand awareness. So we got some great results with, with press back when the messenger was still there. Um, in terms of social media though, 2019, me and my team weren't as refined as we are now. We really weren't. And uh, we didn't spend a dollar. We had no money to spend on it. So we couldn't do boosts or we couldn't do paid social media ads. We couldn't sponsor anything. It was, and we were sad about that. But we didn't need to be, because overnight, people... And this is Adelaide for you. Don't you love Adelaide? This is the thing. Adelaide's Adelaide, and it can really work to your advantage, I found, as a marketeer. So as soon as the right people started to see the event page, we put the event page up, said what we were doing. I know it was a silent disco that got everyone. And um, literally overnight, we started to have 2,000 people say that they were going to attend the event. Brilliant, I was like, tick, oh, we've already succeeded, this is great. But literally, in two weeks, we got over 11.3 thousand people saying that they were going to attend the event. Everyone was shitting themselves. It was like, my God, we're going to need security. People are going to jump in the pier. I'm like, oh, God, I've never done this before. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, but it, it was fine, because actually we got 3,000. And um, our event page back then, 2019, look, an organic reach of 173,000, we were more than happy with. We increased by um, nearly 16% in terms of followers. And, um, you know, everything stacked up great. And yeah, honestly, the peers never looked that busy. So um, it was hugely successful in, for us. Um, return on investment, we spent $11,571. Um, but, you know, we had an audience online through the influencer marketing, PR, through the social media, um, and everything else of $4 million. So it was a great return on investment. I do love a good SWAT. Can't help it. Must be my age. But... Um, the strengths around the campaign were obviously uh, the number of attendees. Um, opportunities, though, we gave us a chance to survey again. So we knew that we'd done something fantastic, but how do we replicate it? And then the worry really sets in as a marketeer, doesn't it? Because it's like, oh, my God, I've over-delivered, and I'm going to have to do it again and again, and I'm not sure how we actually pulled this off. You know, it was half planned and, and half a lot of luck, probably. Um, and weaknesses were, we did receive, I remember walking up and down the pier and dealing with some very upset parents, there was four of them, um, but the, basically the complaint was around the amount of time they had to wait for the different activities or to get into restaurants, and without, you know, I was very polite to them, but that's again a success for, for us. Um, and then we started panicking that maybe some of the councils, City of Holfast Bay or others who've got deeper pockets and bigger space, because it was clear that we were quite space restricted with that amount of people, might take it on, you know, themselves. But then COVID hit. We didn't need to worry about that. Um, we did do a survey and we got some great results. Um, you know, I, I do. It's a step that is easy to forget or it's easy just to not bother, but I try and make sure with campaign work that we always do some kind of um, survey afterwards as well, because it, it helps you in awards, no doubt about it, and it helps us also make sure that we sh we're following through with that discipline. Um, however, an additional benefit was we, we were reached out by City to Bay organizers about two weeks, three weeks from the event, and they were begging us to advertise City to Bay and the, the pit stop at the end on Wiggly Reserve through our social media channels because Kidchella was, was 
far, you know, outbeating them in terms of reach and um, engagement and numbers. So that was that was nice, and um, it was so successful that we actually rolled this out in Victoria and Queensland as well, Kidchella, which was great. So it was, um, you know, scalable on a national basis, and we could use all the learnings and keep rolling it through. I'm not going to make you watch all of Queensland's video, but this is this is how we moved it forward to Queensland. on it was on it goes on for about two minutes um, but it was great to see that you know something that started in Adelaide could give so much benefit to um, Queensland and Victoria as well um, and you know each time it would add a bit more get, get a bit more refined um, which was brilliant so learnings for me were customer insights were definitely key um, and I probably did it because I really didn't know Adelaide well enough, but it stood us in such good stead. There was clearly a family market that had not been completely untapped in terms of how we had um, propositioned the market. Uh, and it helped me secure additional budget from the landlord. Because I think they were probably like, you know, what's this girl from Manchester all about? Does she know what she's doing? I was like, no, I don't. But it's all right, because I've delivered Kid Chella, so now can I have some money? And with that money, I can then do more activation. We can increase our social media audience anymore. Um, and we did market. So straight after Kid Chella, on the back of it, we didn't want people, you know, the engaged new leads to go cold. So we brought them back with activations with um, a series of Marina Pier markets, which were really successful. Again, because we had the space. Tenant buy-in was critical. And I, I, I think they were very doubtful at first that it would work. But had they bought into it sooner, there could have been ev even more um, you know, fantastic offers and specials from all the different restaurants on the pier, not just Oyster Bar and a couple of others. And then um, it was very powerful for JLL. Every time I got out the lift, they were like, oh, is Kid Chella you? I've seen it in the paper. And that's the power of media here in Adelaide, which is so great. Um, but the challenge was how did we keep this new audience of over 11,000, you know? How did we keep them post Kid Chella? They hadn't been interested in Marina Pier before. They didn't want to follow us. They hadn't been. So how did we keep them? And that was the challenge I was most conscious of. So the, the activation was great, but how we kept that digital audience was a real concern. But we just kept on mixing. And I thought, well, you know, it wasn't standalone. Yes, one of the key benefits for us was this massive digital growth. But um, we couldn't have got that without doing the, the activation on the pier. So that's basically what we do do now for Marina Pier. We do loads of activations. So uh, our winter activation is the Umbrella Lights. Um, which was on South Aussie with Cozzy at the weekend, and it's been in the paper, and we've had news crosses, great. And then we did a Taste of Summer campaign for Marina Pier. So, um, you know, people would QR code scan whilst they were sat at the restaurant, and they could win a $1,000 experience. Or we did it all through socials, and that was great. Um, we do a lot of media. Influencer marketing has been very popular for us at Marina Pier. Um, everybody loves posh fish and chips or a very expensive lobster um, and, you know, some really good value food now, thank God. Uh, we do a lot of competition strategy work, so we'll run competitions ourselves or we'll partner up with Cozzy, Adelaide. You know, Adelaide is only small in terms of who we can genuinely partner with at, at a media level, but we've found... Um, South Aussie with Cozzy is very effective for us. Um, in terms of the, the amount of followers that we'll receive on the back of a competition, he far outperforms every other digital channel that, that we've used. So, um, and we don't mind that, you know, it all adds to our marketing mix. We now do do paid social media advertising because Matt Chris gave me more and more budget so we can afford it, which is fabulous. But we probably only spend um, no more than, a, I reckon, $500 a month on that. 
and content creation. We shoot, I'm looking at Iris because uh, she only started this job three months ago. Um, and I did say, get ready, it's going to be busy, it's going to be full on, but come, you know, rain or shine. And when it's windy on Marina Pier, it is windy and cold and wet. But we're always video shooting, doing photo shoots so that our content is um, relevant, um, you know, across all the different generations. And I just wanted to explain that I think Coachella was really the catalyst for our digital growth with this particular centre. You know, when we started, we, we literally in increased both channels, our main channels, by nearly a thousand percent. Um, and that was phenomenal. And this, I wanted to show you this post because we have to be careful how we advertise these fishbowl alcoholic beverages. Um, but we can do it if we do it in a, you know, not too many times and in a safe way. But this post came, was the first post we did on the back of a Taste of Summer campaign. Um, so that campaign there at the top, where people could win a $1,000 um, voucher, a suit, th the first post we did after it was this one. And organically, we got more than 1,600 people um, commenting on the post. So everybody was tagging their friends, saying that we need to go and do this. And that was because of the digital audience that we'd driven through the Taste of Summer campaign. So I think that's what you know, really keeps us motivated around the campaigns that we do, is that the digital engagement and growth that we get with the audience after is genuine, it's real, and it really helps us um, market the restaurants. We know we need to look at TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Is that a really bad thing? Um, however, that's okay, because we've got experts and Gen Zs in my team, and they're going to show me how it's done and create some great successful campaigns through it. Um, I've also read some articles around gaming ads, so where you think you're targeting the younger demographic, but actually there's an awful lot of 40 plus who are on there, and if we can get the right advertisement and the right media plan around it, that could be interesting. And maybe we'll do Kid Chella next in the, in the metaverse. Who knows? Doesn't need to be on Marina Pier. Um, but Kid Chella will most definitely always hold a very close spot in my heart because it was, like I said, literally the launch pad for our digital growth. The next thing coming up at Marina Pier, because you know City to Bay is happening this year. Yeah. So after City to Bay, come and party on the pier. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Sorry it wasn't too digital focused. Thanks for being such a lovely Friday audience. And um, I am on LinkedIn. I'm not as prepared as that other lovely, fabulous gentleman. Um, but I'm Anna Louise from Manchester. There won't be many of us around. <laughs> Uh, that was excellent. You can stay up here for a couple of questions, Anna oh, Louise. Yeah, so, yeah. sure. Uh, but also, thank you. I mean, you're saying thank you to us, but thank you, Anna Louise, for stepping in and for, you know, <laughs> super fun prezzo. Love it. Love, Love it. it. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions from the floor for Anna Louise? We've got one here. Very good. Thank you so much. It looks like such a fabulous, great event. I have kids now, so that's exactly my... <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> I, I'm your demographic, basically. <laughs> um, just a quick question, because at the beginning you mentioned around the image of Marina Pier with the restaurants being fine dining, kind of more the upmarket mm -hmm. image. And obviously the kids shower is targeted at a very different demographic and some of the campaigns that you're saying. So how do you kind of line up with the restaurants and the tenants themselves to do they then change the, the, the offerings to become more... Full, family friendly? How do you line up the image of the, your target audience and their target audience? Yeah, you know what? It's, it's actually tougher than I anticipated because you're dealing with your, you know, for us, we're a property company, right? So it's easy to get confused. I've had my own agencies back in the UK and it's difficult to remind ourselves that we're consultants and we're experts on behalf of JLL. But we have a lot of different stakeholders. We really do. We've got, you know, um, our landlord owners, and they all say, oh, we're not that interested in marketing. Well, there is always an owner's wife who is always across 
everything that we do in marketing, unfortunately. Um, hopefully that changes one day soon. So we've got the, the owners, and then and they stalk our social media. Oh my God, they stalk it. And then we've got all these restaurant owners, you know, they're, each of them, those tenants, they pay into a promo levy. So they think they own us as their own marketing agency. And they don't, because we actually are there to promote the precinct, not them. But it's difficult to get them on board and to buy into what we're trying to do, because they've got their own strategies for the restaurant. And none of them like each other down there either. They all think they're in competition, because, you know, there's not enough people going there. So it is tough. But we, just taking it back to digital, we, you know, we, we've succeed, succeeded so obviously to those restaurant owners around digital marketing in particular, and social media growth, and the way that we content create that actually one of Iris's clients now is that there's a private group who own five of the restaurants on Marina Pier. We now have 13 restaurants open and an occupancy rate of 92%. So things have changed. But the, the group that own the five restaurants have actually taken um, my team on independently to manage their social media management. And the reason I mention that is because it really helps us. Because if we can influence half of Marina Pier restaurants, it helps us to be able to get more of the good value options on the menu. So Iris has worked really hard to make sure they do takeaway knockies at, you know, $10. Or she did pies and Shiraz the other weekend for $8. Who doesn't want a nice pie and a glass of Shiraz for eight bucks? So I think the more that we can influence the restaurant owners and get them on board with these good value offers, it will attract more families. And, you know, the, the, yeah, there's still fine dining options, most definitely, but not everybody wants that in the local area. So um, I hope I answered your question. I think I've got too excited and carried away. <laughs> Any other questions from the floor? Really? I, uh, I uh, would love to hear. Um, I'm not sure if Chris is here from Livewire today. Chris, are you here from Livewire? You really should chat to him about gaming marketing. He did a whole session on it yesterday. Um, I, need, I need to. So you're going to have to catch up, Annalise, after this, um, when the when the videos all go out. But uh, yeah, I'd be interested to see how that would work um, in an activation space. Uh, Flinders were making a joke yesterday that they'll be on Fortnite next year to sort of to um, promote their uh, open days. So maybe we'll see some of your properties up on Fortnite as well. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Who knows? <laughs> um, also, uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, TikTok was a, a huge part of the conversation. All right, let's be honest. Who has a TikTok account? Okay, now who actually posts on TikTok? Yes, Iris, you go, girl. You go, girlfriend. And also the table at the back with Simone and everyone knows a lot of raised hands in the corner back there. Very, very good, very good, very good. All righty. Um, if there aren't any further questions, we might... Um, break there. Hopefully afternoon tea is okay because I think we're a couple minutes ahead. Um, but uh, thank you so much Annalise for making the time today. I know that your time is really precious today because you've got about 50 other things you've got to get to today.